ago. A longtime friend of the Clintons and the former White House uh, special counsel, Lanny Davis, joins our panel as well. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for being with us. I, I have to imagine anything that's going to star uh, Lucianne Goldberg, and I think Dick Morris is in this documentary as well. Like, you kind of know where it's going to go. Did you, did you end up watching the documentary? I ended up watching it with a bag nearby just in case. Um, let me first say that I have not talked to the Clintons at all. I don't know what they think of this. This is me speaking as a longtime friend for over 40 years. The fact that they put this evil person with hatred that is ugly to even watch on national television in a documentary on PBS who set up Linda Tripp to betray a young woman on tape. And that is about the Clinton presidency, which I'd like to talk about. The achievements that are completely omitted with bogus scandals covered as if they were real, like Whitewater, that ended up with nothing, zero, after 3,000 articles in the Washington Post and the New York Times. And that's where they spent their time was so, really, I think, very unfair. So no, no love lost. But there are plenty of people who would say, and I think we timed it out, it was like 40 minutes of the documentary is spent on Monica Lewinsky and the scandal. And there, there are a number of people um, who are not particularly you know, partisan who would say, listen, that was a, a scandal that, that led to attempts to impeach the, the president of the United States. That wasn't a whitewater. That wasn't something that disappeared. That was a scandal that really had the nation em embroiled in that conversation. You think that's unfair, that amount of time spent? 40 minutes is certainly uh, four disproportionate. Hours. But uh, let me let's give the total picture. There were eight independent councils in eight years, $116 million spent. This is before Lewinsky. $116 million, nine people investigated, five cabinet secretaries, President and Mrs. Clinton, and two officials. Not one conviction, not one finding of wrongdoing after $116 million of media obsession funded and, I think, energized by partisan Republican investigations. Zero results. And the entire series, four hours, probably spent three-fourths of those four hours on those bogus, completely nothing scandals. Whitewater, nothing. Filegate, nothing. Travel office, nothing. These were headlines hyped by partisanship ending up in nothing. The Lewinsky matter, yes. A personal, certainly personal failing. President Clinton acknowledged that. It led to an impeachment that was a party line vote. And in the United States Senate, 55 Republican senators, they couldn't get 51 to vote for either one of the counts from the very partisan House process. So that's really, yes, worth mentioning, but in that uh, very, very limited context. Well, I think there are people who are going to disagree agree with, with his assessment. And were you asked to be in the stock? Uh, I know I wasn't. Um, and of course, I don't know about Mr. Reich and his private life, whether he'd want to talk about that and his personal weaknesses. President Clinton acknowledged publicly more than anybody that I know privately or publicly about his personal failings that led to the Lewinsky matter. At the end of his eight term, the American people had their verdict on those personal failings. He created 23 million jobs, took a $300 billion deficit, and turned it into a trillion dollar surplus. And his approval rating on his last day in office, Soledad, was 65 percent. So with all of the acknowledgement of his personal failings on the public stage, with his family and everything out there and his apologies, the American people got it. But do you they think saw that's that ever he had those stop, weaknesses I mean, and his achievements in office were more important with a 65% approval rating when he left off. But when you think back at his legacy, let's say we're having a conversation like this 15 years from now, we'll still be talking about Monica Lewinsky. We won't really start with the 65% approval rating, which I'm sure there are many me, people who wish that they had that approval rating right about this moment. You, 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 know, you don't ever think that by constantly setting that record straight that that's going to rid, rid of this, this scandal, well, which is really what a lot of people remember it, from his president. If there's a salacious media that focuses on scandal rather than 23 million jobs and a trillion dollar surplus and a 65% approval rating, do we talk about Alexander Hamilton's affair? Do we talk about John Kennedy? Is that the legacy of Franklin Roosevelt? Is that the legacy we really talk about? No. The scandal machine in the 90s, the hyperpartisanship, a partisan impeachment, ignoring 23 million jobs, welfare reform, and what in fact turned out to be the American people's verdict on what you just said is a 65% approval rating on the last day in office, the highest 
approval rating and a two-term president in American history. That's the way history should judge him, not the salacious scandal machine that created bogus scandals. I'm talking about $116 million no, spent I heard you, and I, for I, I, absolutely I, I, zero. So will there be fact versus salaciousness in judging what was really going on were bogus scandals. And, and, you know, and, I, I, we're gonna, we'll, and we'll leave it with that rhetorical question because I think the answer is we're going to have to wait and, and see how history judges uh, the presidency. Lanny Davis, always nice to see you. Thanks for talking Thank with you, us so this morning.